All right, hello and good evening. My name is Allison Kapuscinski. I'm the Wallingford Town Engineer. I'd like to thank you for attending our public information meeting for the rehabilitation of South Turnpike Road Bridge over Mansion Brook. The town has hired WMC consulting engineers to complete the design and permitting of the culvert rehabilitation. Tonight we have Keegan Elder, Vice President and Project Manager, who will give a presentation about the proposed project. There will be a time for questions and comments at the end. Feel free to send in your questions to username Jay Costello using the chat feature to be read after the presentation. Additionally, this project or this presentation is being recorded and will be made available on the town website for the duration of the question comment period, which will end December 21st. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Keegan. All right, good evening. Uh, my name is Keegan Elder from WMC Consulting Engineers, as Alex had mentioned. Um, we are the design engineers for the replacement of the South Turnpike Road Bridge over the Manson Road Brook. I'm going to share my presentation uh, screen with all the attendees and go ahead and present the uh, present the project. Okay, so we discussed the name of the project and uh, the public information meeting. So everyone's in the right place tonight. Uh, as Allison mentioned, we were the design engineers for this project. So this slide sort of reiterates that my contact information here and it'll be at the end of the slide as well. Uh, here's an aerial map showing the uh, location of our bridge uh, on South Turnpike Road. The Mansion Brook is a pretty small channel that sort of runs underneath South Turnpike. Most people driving over would not uh, would not notice it, but it's just uh, just to the west of the Quinnipiac River. Uh, there are two twin culverts. This is sort of a street view looking north over the bridge. The bridge is directly in front of us where you see the guide rail on either side of the road. This is a view looking south over the bridge and you can see the guide rail. The bridge runs just below the guide rail that's shown there. Uh, this is a picture of the upstream and downstream face of the structure. On the top left is the upstream face. Uh, the bottom right is the downstream face. You can see in the downstream photo, there's a bit of a drop off at the bottom of the uh, culvert there, the downstream channel and some of the existing wall deteriorations and some of the problems that uh, are part of this project or the reason that we have this project, which I'll get into in more detail as we go along here tonight. Well, so a little bit of history about the project. As I mentioned, it's a twin box culvert, four by three feet. It was constructed in 1935. Uh, the total width of the structure is 39 feet. That's from upstream to downstream, so it includes the roadway and some embankment beyond it. Uh, there's no skew, meaning that it's perpendicular to the roadway. Uh, inspection report dated January of 2018 concluded that the structure is in poor condition and is in need of rehabilitation. Uh, it is hydraulically inadequate, and we're going to do things to sort of uh, not make that any worse as part of our design uh, tasks. 80, 80Ts, average daily traffic is relatively high, almost 7,500 cars, and that was as of 2016. Well, we're in a FEMA flood zone here, and our drainage area is less than a square mile. Uh, so, as I mentioned, reasons for the project, uh, based on the inspection report, the culvert is rated a four out of nine, uh, which is in poor condition. Uh, so we're going to try to rehabilitate this in the most cost-effective way possible uh, for the town. Project goals, as we mentioned, rehabilitation of the bridge, uh, minimize disturbance to travel in public. Most of the work that we're doing, which I'll get into, is done underneath the roadway uh, and off the side of the road, so disturbance to the travel in public will be minimal. Uh, complete construction in a timely manner and effective use of uh, available funding, all of which we'll, uh, we'll delve into as we, as we move forward. Oh, so the proposed construction, what we plan to do, since we have two culverts uh, and we need to work in the dry, we're going to do them half at a time 
uh, divert the flow from one side of the channel to the other with temporary coffer dams. We're going to repair and reconstruct the existing head walls and wing walls. Those are the walls that support the roadway and the embankment. We'll clean the culverts and line the inside to clean all those uh, spalls and delaminations. Uh, we'll improve the hydraulic capacity by beveling the edges of the culvert, doing a little bit of a chamfer. Uh, that, that helps us improve our hydraulic capacity. But we'll install large boulders downstream. Those will be top dressed with riprap directly adjacent to the outlet. As you can see from the earlier picture, the water drops off the outlet and creates a scour hole at the bottom of the, out, uh, the, the, the outlet there. Uh, we met with the DEEP, the fisheries department, and their recommendation was that we stabilize this area uh, to, to avoid further undermining or, or any disruptions to the channel downstream. And then in addition to the work in the culvert and rehabilitation, we're also going to replace the guide rail along the roadway. You can see from some of the earlier pictures uh, that they've seen, they've seen better days and some, some impact damage on some of those systems. Okay, so plans, this is a plan view in gray is South Turnpike and a driveway adjacent to the project. Blue is Mansion Road Brook that goes under through those culverts. Uh, north is to your up, upper to your right and south to your bottom left to give you some sort of perspective of where we are. This is a proposed plan similar to the existing plan in orange. Orange depicts our proposed work, uh, relining of the culverts and reconstruction of the wing walls, uh, re re rehabilitating the wing walls. Downstream, you'll see that we have some uh, orange here as well, and a little cross vein that's in here, a little rock vein. Because of the work that we're doing to culvert, we needed to create a pool downstream to offset some of the fill that we're doing on the project. So fill, meaning any material that we bring in. The liner on the culvert and the riprap constitutes fill. So one of the uh, one of the tasks that we are charged to do per state requirements is to try to offset cuts and fills in the floodway. So one of the things we're doing is expanding uh, the downstream pool right here. And so that's why you see this grading happening down here. In addition to the boulders, uh, the DEEP and the permanent agencies at the state requested that we introduce a rock vein uh, downstream. This will help curb velocities and will create a nice habitat down here for, uh, for the wildlife. Uh, this is a nice feature and, and the state was very pleased that we could, that we could incorporate that on the project. Here's a profile of the culvert. Doesn't really show you much, but culverts here, these are the head walls I talked about. These are the wing walls along the side. And a little bit of orange that you see here is us relining the existing culvert. Uh, the new liner is a cementitious material that's probably gonna be about an inch thick. Uh, and it will sort of protect the surface, cover the surface of the inside of both culverts. Proposed construction, this is sort of a blown up view of the roadway plan that I showed earlier. Uh, as I mentioned, culverts in orange, the work that we're doing along the head walls and wing walls, culvert right here, flow, flow into the east, grading downstream to create that nice uh, channel pool. And then this sort of hatch here is construction access for the contractor to get down there to do that work. Here's an elevation view, sort of like the upstream and downstream pictures that I showed earlier in the slides. Uh, this below is your upstream view. In orange, you would see portions of the existing wing walls and head walls that are in rough shape based on our field investigations. These are going to be uh, patched. On the downstream side, there's a little bit more deterioration of the head wall and wing walls. So hence the reason you see a little bit more orange there. Rip wrap, you see them downstream here in orange. Orange is all the new uh, grays existing 
the rail is going to be replaced. This says existing, but we're going to replace the rail uh, along the entire length of the roadway within the project. <clears throat> this is a typical section of the bridge. If you were to take a knife and sort of slice it across the road, uh, traffic runs here and here, uh, northbound, southbound, uh, your guide rail on the uh, outskirts here, your head walls that we mentioned on either side, and your culvert through here, your flow going through. Here are the beveled edges I mentioned earlier to improve the hydraulic uh, capacity, and then the riprap and large boulders just downstream of the outfall. As you can tell right now, the existing grade runs at the bottom here. There's quite a bit of a drop off, and this is all being scoured out, which could potentially undermine the structure and cause uh, uh, a catastrophic failure. So this riprap is meant to uh, stabilize the entire structure, protect the channel downstream, and, uh, and keep, keep that from being undermined. We talked about some of the construction and staging, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we'll have access to both upstream and downstream with this sort of stone hatch you see here. This is a construction access for the contractor. Uh, you see on the first stage, we have half of it is orange and the other half is gray. That just indicates that flow and water will be running through the existing during the first stage on the uh, north side and then on the south side, we'll be working, working in the dry. As you get down, this is the second stage. We'll alternate, switch the flow over to the south side while we have the north side dry and we continue the work in the culvert, finalizing with the grading and installation of the rock vein downstream. Uh, one of the conveniences of having two culverts side by side is you're able to maneuver the water and work in the dry and get the work done without having to install temporary bypass pipes and things of that nature. So uh, that's one of the advantages of, of, of having the twin culvert system that's there now. Uh, more plan views. This is a sort of a right of way plan. Uh, the red line is the approximate street line, as you can see right here. Most of our work beyond the uh, right-of-way line is for construction access for the contractor to get in and do work. We don't have any permanent structures like wing walls or anything being constructed. We're just rehabilitating what's there now. Those are within the town, the towns right away. Uh, and then downstream, we'll be doing some grading for the pool and the rock vein. These are all included in the temporary construction easement. Basically, once it's there, it's in, there'll be no need to go back to maintain or change anything like that. Hence the reason only temporary easements are required. If we had permanent structures outside of the red line, the rights of way line, upstream or downstream, uh, then you would venture into the permanent easement or partial take uh, sort of parts of rights of way. Uh, Fortunately for this project, the right of way is wide enough that we do not have any permanent structures on private property that need to be maintained in the future. Okay, so as far as environmental considerations go, as I mentioned, we had uh, what's called an interagency coordination meeting with the Department of Transportation, the EEP, uh, the Army Corps personnel, and other uh, environmental agencies, and uh, part of their recommendations, the reason for that meeting was for them to confirm all permits that are required and any recommendations that they would like to see on the project. So everyone was able to chip in and, and, and give us uh, some direction from an environmental and permitting uh, standpoint. The result of that meeting was essentially that for the federal permit, for the Army Corps permit, we need a pre-construction notification of PCN. Uh, we have prepared that PCN and we are anticipating, or well, we're waiting for a local permit approval uh, before submitting that. Segway, we also need the local permit. Uh, we're expected to have a hearing on that uh, at the beginning of January. The permit has been uh, uh, accepted by the towns, and uh, we have a meeting coming up in the near future for that. And in addition to the PCN, DEEP has what's called a 4-1 water quality, which goes along with the PCN. They go hand in hand. Uh, and part of this funding program for this project, State Local Bridge Program, you have to do both, uh, both of those things. So those are all ready to go and they're in the final processes. 
So best management practices, as you saw from the plan view, will have silt fence installed around the entire site. Uh, we'll keep wetland impacts to a minimum. Uh, any unconfined in-stream work will be restricted to between June 1st and September 30th. Means there are some things that the contractor can do outside of those periods from an unconfined standpoint. And if he has to do anything unconfined, it has to be within that window. Our plans and specifications are very clear about that. And uh, the inspection team during construction uh, would uh, sort of enforce those regulations as we, as, we, as we go through here. And at the end, any disturbed areas that uh, were impacted during construction, they are restored uh, back to their uh, original uh, state. Uh, public utilities, uh, there are a fair amount of utilities here all overhead, uh, but neither of which are being impacted by this project. Uh, the power lines are high enough above. We're not doing any roadway work, just the guide rail and work to the bridge and the bridge proper. Uh, so at this point, we do not anticipate any impacts to the public utilities in this location. However, we have notified all the utility companies with services in this area just to make them aware of the project <coughs> as we move forward. For some reason or the other, if the contractor gets down there and he says, oh, you know, I need to do this, that, the other, the utility companies have been notified. But as of now, we have uh, no plans to relocate or disrupt any services uh, to perform this work. Uh, project cost and funding, as I mentioned, it's a uh, funding program called the State Local Bridge Program. Under that program, the state reimburses the towns 50% of design and construction costs. Uh, the projected construction costs for this project is approximately uh, 525,000 of that state will cover 50%, town 50%. Uh, that's 262.50 each. Uh, as we talked about construction, we're anticipating uh, start date of June 1, September th June 1 through September 30 uh, of 2021. There's a possibility that we may go sooner, uh, but sooner is good. If we get in there and get out, uh, it's, 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 it's better. And then that duration equates to approximately four months from a scheduling perspective. So, as I mentioned before, my name is Keegan Elder. Uh, my contact information is down below. And you have Allison's information up on the upper left that you can contact either one of us with any questions. Generally, questions can go to Allison and she would forward them to us if they're design related or handle them uh, as need be. Uh, this presentation, as she mentioned, will be posted on the town's uh, website in addition uh, to to the uh, to the recording of the presentation along with the presentation. So if you have any future questions, you can contact uh, Allison and she'll give a, a, a duration or a time period in which that you guys can uh, you guys can ask additional questions if you had none tonight. Uh, with that, my presentation is is over and I'll open the floor to any uh, questions. Okay, it looks like we have uh, questions coming in, so I'll read them as as they as they appear. Yeah, Lauren, you can ask the questions uh, if you are muted your microphone, but if you want to type, that's that's up to you as well. All right, the first question is, you mentioned 262,500 in town funds to be used. Allison, where is this in the budget? Hi, Lauren, this hasn't been allocated yet. We do have some funds um, left over from 
I believe, kept non-recurring from 2015. And it's the same pool of money that we use to hire the consultant, WMC Engineering. So uh, we will need additional funding from the town to complete this project. Okay, next question. Can you elaborate on the access road for the contractor materials to be used? Will it be removed after project completion? So yes, the access road is gonna be approximately uh, 10 to 15 feet wide. Uh, the material used is going to be crushed stone that uh, sort of like is used on a tracking pad. So equipment going in and out as they get back on the roadway, they don't carry mud and dirt that ends up back in the, in the channel uh, as sediment. Uh, and all this material will be removed upon completion of the project and that area would be reseeded and turf established uh, back to its uh, uh, original state. Hopefully that, that answers the question. Uh, and the uh, last question, can you just repeat when you'll be going before the Inland Wetland uh, Commission? Yes, we'll be, uh, we're slated to go before the commission on January 6th. Okay, uh, Lauren has no more questions. Allison, uh, I guess with that, I will end the uh, presentation. Do you have anything to add before I stop recording? Nope, just for anybody that is listening to the recording, please feel free to contact us. We're gonna leave the uh, question and comment period open through December 21st to give everybody pl plenty of time to uh, take a look at the slides and, and ask us any questions you might have. Okay, excellent. With that, thank you everyone for participating and uh, we look forward to a successful project. Thank you.